All right, guys, welcome to S'more Live Happy Hour. We're the weekly show that dishes on everything dating from your craziest dating stories to hilarious games, useful tips, and much, much more. My name is ACA. I'm the founder of this company. It's called S'more. If you like the show Love is Blind, you will love S'more. We're all about getting to know a person before we judge them based on a headshot. And today we have with us a very special guest, Alexander Rodriguez, not the baseball player, even better, the podcaster, radio show host, funny man. Alex, what are you doing to stay Woo. mentally and physically fit during COVID? You're looking at it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Is that water or are we drinking a big glass of tequila? Uh, it's vodka. It's vodka. <laughs> <laughs> so is that what's keeping you sane during COVID? Uh, it definitely is. I don't know about physically fit, though. <laughs> that I don't even know. I'm afraid to have to wear pants for the first time, you know, for real. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how have you gone through COVID? What have you done mentally to have some stimulation or other ways to have some stimulation or physical stimulation? What have you been doing? Well, I tell you, you know, a big chunk of what I do is live events, MC Prides. Well, we know all of those live events were taken away this year. Yes. Um, and so COVID has made a lot of people in the entertainment industry kind of refashion what we do, yeah. even in terms of having to learn content creation, how to do editing, how to do TikTok. Oh, my Lord. And now Clubhouse? <laughs> this is so much. So we constantly have to be evolving our, our brand, our skill set. And that's what I've done. My writing um, has, has uh, really filled a large portion of my COVID time. So, you know, that's something I've been able to focus on. Where does the podcasting. Your, okay, where does your funny inspiration come from? Because I was watching some of your videos and I'm on the floor laughing. I mean, it's like, it's, it's kind of cheesy, but you get me every time. So how do you, like, where, how do you come up with it? I'm going to be honest. I'm a mama's boy and my sense of humor comes from my mom. I mean, she's one of the funniest people ever. Uh, she has a dark sense of humor. And humor has just been a major part of, of our lives. And so um, I got it from her and from watching a sassy 1940 and 50 black and white Betty Davis films. I mean, that's, that's the that. honest truth. <laughs> Love that. Okay, let's play two truths and a lie so we can get to know a little bit more about you. So tell us two things about you that are truthful. One, that's a lie. And we have to guess what's what. Okay, uh, number one, a Bravo liberty uh, peed her pants during my podcast and didn't tell us. We found out after the show, but she <laughs> laughed so hard and she drank so much she peed her pants. That's one. Uh, number two, or um, I crashed uh, the opening night party at the LA Opera for Carmen. Wasn't invited, totally crashed it. Um, I kidnapped the lead, the lead, Carmen. I kidnapped her and took her to the Abbey in West Hollywood till 2 a.m. and she had a matinee the next day. Okay, I don't believe the third. I mean, I kind of believe all three, but I don't Wait, believe. I only did two. Oh, that oh, that was all part of one. Okay, yeah, you crashed it and you brought Carmen. Okay, yeah. Okay, what's I mean, number? That's one story. And then the third one is um, I was the first openly gay Latin X person to sing the national anthem at a Mighty Dicks, uh, Mighty Ducks hockey what is game. Mighty Ducks? <laughs> a Mighty Ducks <laughs> coffee game. Did you pregame before you came to the show? No, a little bit. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I, I believe the third one's a lie. I don't believe you're the first Latinx gay man to sing the national anthem at a muddy dicks or ducks game. You are correct. That is, that is false. <laughs> that is not true. Okay, would Bravo celebrity peed her pants on your show? No, I can't. I can't. Nope. Okay, give us I a hint. Was she from New York? No. Beverly Hills. Jeff Lewis. <laughs> okay, no. She's feisty, so maybe. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, we'll get back to that in a second. Okay, so tell us, Alexander, what is your craziest dating story of all time? You are not going to believe this. This could have been another story, but I, I had to save it for this moment. Uh, it was an anniversary dinner. Um, it was year one anniversary, and we went to Sur in West Hollywood, which we know, you know, is, is on Vanderpump Rules and, and all that kind of stuff. So it was yeah. a special night. Um, we had pre-drinks, we had appetizers, we had during dinner drinks, we had dessert, we had so many entrees. I mean, it, it was an event, right? Um, and and, and my, my boyfriend at the time, was very little, he's very, very, very petite. <laughs> um, and we're just sitting across and it was at the end of the meal and there's so many empty like glasses and plates of food. And um, on top of all the drinks, we had espresso. And so we're finishing up and, um, I told him, you know, one of my signature jokes. 
and he snorted um, the espresso <laughs> through his nose. Oh my God. But then it made him breathe in, and then he projectile vomited. No, he did not. The whole meal. And I don't mean just like, I mean oh my projectile. God. <laughs> it was like the exorcist. And they seat you pretty, pretty oh. tight in, right? It was a Friday night. It not only went all over the table and me, oh, it went over both of the tables next to us. And then he ran into the bathroom, locked himself in the stall. They threatened to call security if he didn't leave because he was in there for an hour crying and crying because he was so embarrassed. Oh they had God. to literally bring in like a hazmat cleanup crew. Ew, um, God. That was a very expensive dinner for many reasons. <laughs> Wait, okay, so d was that, did that seal the deal and are you guys married or was that short-lived and it kind of ended downhill we, from there? We literally broke up the week after. I, I didn't, like, it wasn't a big thing to me. I mean, it's, it's such a funny story. At the moment it was, <laughs> I'm sure it was embarrassing for him. I mean, the whole thing was just ridiculous. Yeah. But he was so sensitive about it that he couldn't look at me in the face after. In fact, that night, he, like, ran off into the night and took an Uber home. Um, oh and I God. never saw him. Uh, like, we never saw each other before we broke up. It was all by text. But he just couldn't get over it. He could not get over the fact. Um, yeah. I mean, it's a big deal. Was that your first date? Because that would be even more special. No, no. One year anniversary. One year anniversary. Okay, yeah. well, you know, guys... Listen to this story, eat slowly, drink slowly, and don't projectile vomit on your date. It's not a good look. Okay, <laughs> I want to get into your career a little bit more. So what got you into comedy and slash journalism? Where did this all begin? Uh, talking too much in class. Literally every report card I have was talks too much during class, talks too much during <laughs> class. Uh, no, but I was, like I said, I was raised on, on old movies. Um, you know, I was a latchkey kid growing up. I grew up in a neighborhood not around other kids. So in the summer, those movies were my friends. So like the sassy uh, humor, the one-liners and all that, I just was uh, so addicted to entertainment. Um, and it's just been a big part of my life ever since. And um, how I got like into podcasting, I met uh, this actress at a release party and we drank and drank and they were closing. They were like mopping. It's like three in the morning and we're still drinking martinis. And, and she threw up on you. No. <laughs> And that was it. No. <laughs> okay. She had just bought a podcast station. And this was this was six years ago. So it was podcasting was first coming out. Like people yeah. were doing it in their garages, not in right. studio. But she had a studio. She said, you should come in and try a few episodes. And, uh, you know, six years later, the rest is history. I used to be a commercial banker, if you can believe it. Uh, yeah. I kind of could believe it. I kind of could believe it. Really? Kind of, kind of could believe it. <laughs> Okay, so, so tell I love yeah. that, that industry. I love that industry, and I've been doing entertainment ever since. Who is your comedic inspiration? Uh, it has to be between Carol Burnett, Madeline Kahn, and Joan Cusack. I mean, I thought you were going to say Joan Rivers, not because I feel like you have a little bit of her now. Yeah, in fact, yes, uh, people have called me, you know, the Latino husky version of Joan Rivers, um, and I, I love her. I, you know, I absolutely love her. Um, yeah, but. She she goes a little like a little much. <laughs> she goes there. She goes yeah. there. Yeah. So um I'm a little bit nicer, just a little bit nicer in, in my comedy. But she I mean she was she was huge in what she did for women in the comedy circuit. I mean she was one of the first women on late night TV doing comedy, you know? Yeah. So kudos to Joan Rivers. She's amazing. Okay. Rest so in tell peace. me, what was your big break? What has been your big break so far? Biggest break, biggest career shakeup. You know, uh, that's a really good question. Nobody's ever asked me that question before. You know, there's been so many, uh, like, successes, and I don't say that egotistically, but, you know, hard work, and you know this, running, yes. running this app and starting, starting your own empire, you know, every, every step forward is a huge success. Um, but I would have to say, you know what, a big moment in my career, uh, last year I was uh, the media grand marshal for Palm Springs Pride. Wow. And so there was like the opening reception. I was in the parade with my best friend. And then my mom was in the front because I said I'm a mama's that. boy. And so being in the parade and um, I was the MC and I got to introduce TLC. Well, minus the L, so TC. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, Ross Matthews got on stage with me, Andrew Christian. It was just a crazy three-day festival and a celebration of the, the podcasting and the magazines I write for. So... That that was a high point. Okay, I love that. I want to know who is the most intimidating person that you've ever interviewed? Uh, Lady Kazan. Who's Lady Kazan? 
So Lainey Kazan, uh, God, she she was the mom in my big fat Greek wedding. Okay, okay. So, but she has this whole history. I mean, she's best friends with Frank Sinatra. Uh, you know, she was Barbara Streisand's understudy and funny girl on Broadway. Wow. And when, Bar when Barbara couldn't do the show one night, she went on and, uh, <laughs> and Lainey Kazan's mom called all the press and they re-reviewed <laughs> the show. Uh, wow. but she's a jazz singer. She's been in so many, you know, films like in the 60s with Dean Martin. And um, oh, she was the mom in Beaches, too. I don't know. Remember, she's yeah, like, yeah. you know, what are you, a camel? Yeah, that's her. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so why was she so intimidating? Was she demanding? Did you just not know what to expect from her bad reputation? What was it? You know, she was so she's sweet, but she did have a lot of demands. We had to do a special time to to, to tape the show. Um, and she was worried about the lighting and the sound and her makeup and hair. And it's like, it's a podcast girl. Uh, <laughs> and we had, we had to get her coffee and bagels. And so there was a lot of pre-work, but once the show started, I mean, she was a dream, but you know, somebody with so many different stories like that. She even did a movie with Divine. I mean, like she has really, wow, you know, run there. the circuit. And you know, when you meet somebody, they have so many stories you want to ask about. Uh, it, it was a little intimidating. She just has an energy. I love that. Okay. So tell us about being a gay man in media. Is this the golden age for the gay man in media? Because I feel like it is. Is it changing? Is it still a struggle? Tell me all about it. Do you want me to be PC or do you want me no, to? No, I don't want you to be PC. I want you to okay. tell me the real deal. We're going to get real now. Um, there is a boom right now that we're having in Hollywood. We're also seeing a lot of um, entertainment reporters, you know, on Extra and all of these type of shows. And we're seeing uh, a large population of gay men taking over uh, that scene. Um, are they are they husky? No. Are they pretty boys? Yes. Are they gym goers? Yes. So yes, we're making some progress, but I feel it's still extremely superficial. Yes. And um, so that has not changed. I have not gotten certain jobs because of you know being a curvy girl at times, um, or just not having that kind of pretty boy West Hollywood look. And I'm being very honest, and it's still a fact, but we are being seen. Uh, but that's, that's, just, um, that's okay. just a reality. I think Hollywood, you need to listen straight right now. Listen straight. I don't know if that's an expression, <laughs> but listen straight. You just made it a, a thing. Personality first, then looks, then behavior. If, it's, if the guy's not funny, who cares? Everyone well, see, looks that's good. Just it. it doesn't really matter. And like, if I'm reporting movie news or you know, celebrity gossip, who cares that you know, I went to the gym last night? And then I look at Ross Matthews and I'm like, God bless his heart. Well, you know, we're all watching RuPaul's Drag Race every week and we always love him on RuPaul's Drag Race. Okay, so I have a zillion more questions to ask you. So what about diversity? So we're talking about, you know, being a gay person in the industry, great. What about diversity of color? Do we really think that this is a sea change? Is it a blip? Is it gonna go back to the old ways? Is this really a new wave of true diversity in the media? What say you? I'm gonna be honest again. <laughs> um, Hollywood loves, it's, it's flash words and it's hot topics. When the Me Too movement came out, it was all about celebrating uh, women's equality in film. And, you know, we we're gonna make, uh, you know, uh, Hollywood was gonna make a statement. Um, and then last year, we didn't have any female directors that were nominated, um, you know, for, for, for best film director. Remember when Crazy Rich Asians came yes. out and it was supposed to be a celebration of Asian culture and we were finally gonna see um, Asian equality in front of the camera and behind of the camera. Yes. Then it kind of fizzled out. Yes. So now, you know, we are in the, in, in the year of BLM um, yes. and it's been a hot button and we've seen celebrities rah, 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 but let's really see if it takes shape um, or it's going to be like, you know, what's the next thing? So Hollywood is a business and, you know, people that say that Hollywood has a duty to audiences and things like that. Yes. But at the end of the day, it is a business and we have to remember that as well. Yes. Um, um, so I would, I would love to say that things were changing and I do believe that they are changing and it's all about baby steps. Even yes. a baby step is, is a step forward. I, I think we have a long way to go and there has to be sincerity in it. You can't just say rah, rah BLM because it's popular or you know, yay, women equality, let's pay them equal because it's popular that year. You have to be sincere and you have to make a way for it to be concrete and to take shape so that it's not a different thing. And speaking of a different thing, let's talk about your relationship life. That's a different thing. Let's get personal. So what is your relationship status of today? Single. Why do you mingle. Think, but why do you think you're single? Uh, 
to be perfectly honest, I have been so busy this year. This year has been one of the best years for my career uh, with the magazines and now three podcasts under my belt um, and doing a lot of like podcast workshops and uh, digital appearances. I have never been busier. And I really think it would be unfair to date somebody while I am so busy. Because, um, you know, that's entertainment. We can be a little drama queens, a little egotistical. Yes. Um, and if I'm dating somebody, because my next relationship is going to be a real relationship. It's yes. going to be something that's going to hopefully be for the rest of my life. I yes. want to put the energy and time into it that it deserves. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm just too focused on, on career. Now, have you ever heard the expression, God only gives you as much as you can handle? Yeah. So you can have 17 jobs and also a boyfriend, husband, or partner. I had a very busy day, and then my ceiling caved in and ruined my desk. And I said, you know what? This is a blessing because God knew I could handle this and everything else. <laughs> you can do it. I believe in you. So tell me, what is, what is your relationship type? So what's the, the perfect type of guy for you? I have dated so many different types. I really, I know people say, I don't have a type, and then they end up having a type. Right. Uh, literally, it has to be somebody uh, that supports my career, that supports me in my career, that gets along with my mom, which is not easy. Uh, <laughs> but above all, it's somebody that has to have a sense of humor. If there's not a sense of humor, uh, I've dated super, super attractive people. I'm just like, oh my God, nothing to laugh about, nothing to talk Ooh. about. I could not do it. Sense of humor is, the, <laughs> is, is at the center of everything I do. You know, I'm putting the fun in funeral. I mean, it's really yes. part of, of my life. So if you don't have a sense of humor, if you're not going to make me laugh or just you know, have a smile on your face. I, I can't. I okay. can't. I want to know what your take on love is blind is, is because it's a new concept. It was basically a social experiment. What is your view on the show? Love is blind. Yay or nay? Uh, I haven't seen it. Do you know the concept? Uh, you don't see the person that you're dating or they only, uh, it's Helen Keller's new reality show. So, I don't know. <laughs> so basically 15 guys, 15 girls, they're forming relationships through a wall. So they're getting to know more about each other. They're talking to each other over a six week period. And really at the end of the six weeks, they can decide, okay, there's one or two people that I'm really interested in meeting and seeing what they look like. And do we judge someone on the surface or do we want to go a little bit deeper and getting to know them first before we just swipe past them because they weren't as hot as the last person? Well, you're probably much younger than me, but I remember when AOL had chat rooms and yes. you would meet people on chat rooms. I was there. You could talk for hours and hours and then you would go into like the texting. This is when you had to text one letter to, you know, over and over to, to, to make no a, a letter. I had the yeah. same phone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so we kind of had that, I believe. And then you would actually meet them out in public and you'd be like, you know, I'll be the one standing here, whatever. Yeah. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. You know, we're, we're human and we... We, uh, attraction plays a big part in a relationship. Yeah, for sure. We can't help that. It's with pheromones, it's with energy, and it's what our body is instantly attracted to is what we're attracted to. You can't really change that. But I have fallen in love with people, and I found people attractive that were not in my wheelhouse, so to speak, but because I either, you know, uh, did a project with them or just yeah. became friends. And the that, more you get to know them, the harder they become. And then you can find something attractive about yeah. them. It might not be the instantaneous, like, wow, look at those muscles, but little quirks and smiles and little things like that uh, can, can build so, that attraction. Basically what you're saying is if they wanted to cast you on the next season of Love is Blind, you would do it. Yes, although if they heard my voice, I don't know that they would pick me. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree. Okay, talk to me about being gay and on dating apps. Is it the worst thing ever? Is it the best thing ever? Is it still the wild, wild west? What say you about the traditional gay apps. I'm not going to say what it's called, but the traditional gay apps out there in West Hollywood. Do you like them? Do you hate them? What is it? They serve its its purpose. You know, it's like Postmates. You get your meal delivered and you have your meal and then you're done. Um, yes. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does what it does. You know, we all get a little lonely sometimes. Sometimes, you know, I'll be like, not during COVID though, but you know, you, you'll, you'll need the company of, of a gentleman. Yes. Um, and it serves its purpose and then it's done. Uh, I think people can be addicted to it and use yeah. it as the only way to meet other people. That, no, but it's there for a reason and yeah. Okay, I asked you to bring something with you that you always use or bring with you on a date. What's that thing that you always use or bring with you on a date? I'm gonna share with you what everybody should always bring with them and it could be the key to success, the key to love. 
Give it's it to gum. us. It's gum. <laughs> Specifically, Excel Fresh. No, no, Minty Fresh. Extra, girl. Oh, extra. extra. Okay, extra. extra. So there extra. You go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you get nervous or you eat, you know, a lot of food and then you get vodka breath or whatever and you get nervous and at the end of the night, just, just get a little gum. I also heard gum prevents you from vomiting. So in your case, maybe you should recommend that to your partner, no? Oh my God, that poor kid. Oh my Lord. Okay, so do you like reality TV or is it just me? Love it, love okay, it. Okay, what is your favorite show on reality TV right now? Uh, you know, it's still Real Housewives of New York. Who's your favorite on Real Housewives of New York? Used to be Sonia, but then <laughs> she's gotten so crazy. Um, it's Bethany, even though she's not in the show anymore. Uh, it'll always be Bethany because she remember when she first started, she was not the wealthiest. Yes. And we have seen this girl work. We have seen her go through it. And her one liners are so real. They're not like, they're not like Nene Leakes one liners where yes. she's probably written them down and she practices them. Bloop. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Bethany is just naturally funny because she doesn't need to be funny and she just tells it how it is. And that's yeah. It. Yeah. And that's why we love her. Okay. What is the most overrated reality show on TV right now? Uh, I would have to say The Bachelor. And what's the most underrated reality TV show right now? Ooh, that's a good question. You know, I'm going to say Love It or List It, even though it's kind of a makeover show, but it's yeah. reality TV. I love that show so much. Hillary Farr, she's, she's my new Bethany. I mean, she's, she's <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> she has a little bite to her, I think. Yes. Okay. So I want to play a game with you called Sip and Tell, where you get to sip your answers instead of Speak your answer. I have some here so I can play along with you. But really, this is about me getting to know more about you, all of us getting to know more about you, and also embarrassing you just a bit. So have you ever drunk and called an ex? If so, take a sip. Oh. <laughs> Do you keep pictures of your ex on your phone? If so, take a sip. Do you regret something that you said or did in an interview recently? If so, take a sip. <laughs> Do you have any well, weird do you have any weird rituals before you do a podcast? If so, take a sip. Have you ever dated two guys at once? If so, take a sip. Dated or dated? Winked that one. Have you ever slept with two different people in the same day? Not together. If so, take a sip. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. Has a celebrity recently slid into your DMs? Uh, yes. Can we know who? Mm -mm. Okay. Have you recently slid into another celebrity's DMs? <laughs> well, celebrity, I mean, uh, yeah. Well, Lance Bass counts. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> okay. Um, have you ever sent nudes to a partner? If so, take a sip. <laughs> never. I'm You've so never... shy. I wear socks in the shower. I'm just a shy person. Okay, have you ever received news in a text? If so, take a sip. Oh, this morning. Do you, do you believe in dating someone that's 10 years older or 10 years younger than you? If so, take a sip. Okay, that was pretty good. I think we learned a lot about you. So I I'm literally you, almost done. I know, and this is gonna get better because we're asking you for your relationship advice from one of your biggest fans. So this guy's name is Billy. And he's from Newport. I don't know where Newport is. There's probably a lot of Newports in the country. But Billy from Newport writes, Dear Alexander, do any of your straight guy friends ask you for dating tips? I find my gay friends provide the best dating tips ever. I recently became interested in using some toys in the bedroom with my girlfriend for prostate stimulation. But I'm not sure how open she is to a conversation about my prostate stimulation. How can I have this conversation with my girlfriend? What do you make recommend? It, make it all medical. God put our G spot in a certain place for a certain reason. It's just a physical thing. It's not. It's not gay. It's a physical reaction. That's that's where our love button is. So make it like a medical conversation that or scientific conversation saying, "Hey, I feel stimulated by this. It's it's scientifically okay." And um, now, do you think there's a double standard though with men? you know, the world says, well, you know, men shouldn't really use those things because they're of a man. Course. And why do you want to put things in your, okay, so what's the deal and how do we get rid of this taboo? I don't know because I've never bought a sex toy in my life. Um, you're also not a straight man, so maybe. Oh, well, you're, yeah. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, you know, I think uh, just having more open conversations. I think men, straight men are becoming 
uh, more secure in their feminine side over the last five years. I've seen that with fashion. I've seen yeah. that with emotions in movies. We have actors that cry on camera now. So we'll get there. How do you show your man or your woman that you care? Just be there. Just be there for however they need. If they're in a bad mood when they come home from work, be there. Uh, they need a little uplifting text during the day, be there. Uh, you know, they want to get trashed one night and you have to be the designated driver, just be there. Okay, Randall from Austin writes, what is your relationship deal breaker? Uh, drugs. Okay. Drugs is absolutely- Like drug addicted or if you casually do drugs? I mean, what's casual to some people? Uh, like any h hardcore drugs? No. Um, no. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Zero tolerance. Yeah. Um, somebody that doesn't have ambition. I can't do that either. I okay. mean, you could, like, if you want to be the top uh, grocery bagger at Whole Foods, <laughs> and that's what you want to do, then do that. That's ambition. I mean, somebody that doesn't want to get off the sofa, doesn't want to get right. a job, something like that, can't do that. Super lazy. Okay. So Alexander, I'm going to ask you to leave everyone with a dating or relationship tip of the day, guys. I'm going to give you my dating and relationship tip of the day. And then I'm going to tell everyone who's on S'more Live Happy Hour next week. And also a very fun event that's happening tonight. So my quick tip of the day, there is a new station on BuzzFeed on YouTube that's all about dating and crazy, crazy dating stories, which some of them are very hard to believe. But I would go on to YouTube, go onto the BuzzFeed channel and make sure you watch and listen to these stories because you want to know what not to do on a date and you want to know when to spot red flags. So go check out that uh, YouTube feed right now. And Alexander, what is your relationship or dating tip of the day? This is my best favorite tip to give in love and dating. If you on Saturdays like to go eat at Panda Express and then go to garage sales, do that on a date. Be who you are on your dates. We are so, you know, with a superficial first, second, and third date, going to a fancy restaurant and all that. If you do that in real life, do that. But if you don't, take me on a date of what you do on a regular time, because that's who I'm going to be dating. Guys, be real. Alexander, thank you so much for joining us. And we will see you next time on S'more Live Happy Hour. Drinks and have an amazing weekend. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Alex. Take care. <laughs>